Hello and welcome to a new pseudo series of sorts, I suppose, where I'm going to have a look at pretty much every mod that a lot of people have suggested that I take a look at. A lot of people ask me in the comments, have you played X mod? Have you, you know, will you play X mod? And I often <clears throat> say maybe in the future, uh, but the reality of the situation is that I don't have time to play every mod. And uh, so instead of just, or instead of making a series that can sometimes span 40 episodes on every single mod uh, for Hearthstone 4, which I, you know, that will never be done, uh, that, uh, that uh, enterprise. So instead of doing that, I'm going to create various shorter videos where I, where I have a look at what each mod does that's unique and talk about it. So this is Après Moi Le Deluge, I think is how you pronounce it. I took one year of French, I think, uh, if I remember correctly. And, uh, you know, the reason I say if I remember correctly is because I remember nothing of that class. Anyways. So. Let's uh, look at the brief history here first. At least for the French Empire. You can see here, these are all new leaders. Après Moi Le Deluge takes place in a world... Well, it takes place in 1936, but it takes place in a world in which Napoleon Bonaparte and his wars were successful. His efforts were rewarded and his colonial, or uh, sorry, not his colonial, but his continental system that he established in the world, it lasted until 1936, almost. The empire established by Napoleon was supposed to civilize the world, bringing peace to Europe and glory to France. It succeeded for a hundred years, but the peace was shattered in the most traumatizing way imaginable. Once the Great War had been won by France just a few short years ago, and the English and Russians, her perpetual enemies, were humiliated, half a generation of men lay in shallow graves stretching from Calais to Romania. The trauma of the loss of the cream of the French manhood weighs heavily on the fatherland even as the embers still flicker in the ruined nations of Loser and Victor alike. As you can see here, there's some interesting stuff going on here with um, some very interesting uh, nations. Uh, there's like far more um, monarchism in this world, of course, because of Napoleon uh, and like empires and stuff like that compared to the real world. Uh, it is in that sense somewhat uh, comparable to Kaiserreich, but whereas Kaiserreich takes a somewhat uh, like uh, it has, in, it has a uh, divergence, divergence point, sorry, that is closer to our timeline here in the game, uh, then uh, this one sort of pushes it further and further back until it gets, you know, to the span of a hundred years here. So the development and the way things differ is downright absurd. This is possibly the weirdest alt history mod that I've ever seen for Hearts of Man 4. And uh, yeah, let's have a look. So first of all, I gotta say, Looking at the leaders, beautiful portraits, some of them are painted portraits. There's one I don't like, and uh, that is only because I know what's wrong with it. Ernst Talman here, uh, of the People's Republic of Germany. This man, a socialist in, uh, or communist I suppose, uh, but a socialist uh, as well in, um, in real life, but murdered in the 40s I believe, this man picture, that's not him. That's actually from a, I believe, a movie in, in the 1950s about this man. This is an actor, as far as I'm aware. It looks like him, but it's not actually him. That's one uh, slight nitpick there uh, that I have to uh, I have to state. But yeah, let's select country. We're not going to do be doing a full playthrough or anything. We're mostly just going to be having a look at the map. So what this mod brings to the table is, of course, a completely overhauled, or not overhauled, but completely, like, changed map, completely changed focus trees, and uh, different ideologies. Other than that, and of course events, new events of course. Other than that, the mod does not do a whole lot. Technology is the same, uh, the base game mechanics are the same, I'm going to hit start because uh, this custom music, which is only uh, present in the uh, menu, not in the base game itself, uh, is quite loud. Let's jump into the French Empire. Uh, just so that we can get rid of the very loud music, also somewhat compressed, not the greatest audio quality, and then let's have a look at the map. 
you will already spot some absurdities here. For example, the Kingdom of Sweden Denmark, which covers Norway, but apparently they uh, forgot to mention us. And uh, you've got the Kingdom of Great Britain. Their empire is uh, sort of intact, but not... Um, let's see, you can look at the uh, factions. Got the Kingdom of Great Britain uh, leading the faction called the Commonwealth, which spans their colony up in Newfoundland, down to South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. Uh, this is uh, Papua, yeah, Papua New Guinea, and some islands in the Pacific, for example, the Solomon Islands, uh, Borneo, Singapore, and of course India, ba uh, Bangladesh, and pieces of Pakistan. Well, most, most of Pakistan. You've got the uh, East Asian sphere, sort of e the... Uh, what would you call it? The um, oh yeah, the co-prosperity sphere of um, of uh, real life history. Also, we got no music now. There we go. I should fix it. And there, they interestingly have the uh, the imperial um, mon, the imperial sort of seal as their flag, not the Japanese flag itself. So Hirohito here, I'm guessing, I'm guessing is sort of a um, more or less like supreme absolute monarch. You've got the Chinese bloc under the Empire of China, under Hu Hanmin, whom I don't know much about. You've got the Heavenly Kingdom, stuff like that. Kingdom of Najd, not too absurd, still. Abdulaziz ibn Saud. Ottoman Empire under Sultan Mehmed. French Empire, of course, rules a lot of Africa, direct, uh, directly administered in the French fashion, not under colonial, like, viceroys and stuff like the British. However, there are also colonies here under the Federal Kingdom of America. And that one is quite absurd. The line of John II, the House of Hamilton, was not the Founding Father's first choice for king, However, George I Washington died without an heir, and Alexander Hamilton was selected as sovereign by a constitutional convention. John II led America competently through the Great War, seizing many British possessions in the Western Hemisphere, and forging closer ties to the French Emperor. So we have a line of monarchs extending back down to Alexander Hamilton. If that isn't strange, then I don't know what is. You've got the central powers here which is a, an alliance, I believe, ostensibly led by the Polish, and, of course, the Continental System under Napoleon, or Napoleon's uh, heirs at this point, the Russian Empire, Alexander IV, Grand Duke Alexandrovich in um, Finland, installed by the Russians, Wilhelm Bull in um, Sweden, uh, Denmark, which does include Norway. There are events and some stuff. There is some stuff uh, regarding Norway there. So, another mechanic that they add is this stuff. Or, they at least change this. This is, um... So, you have a bunch of laws that are comparable to, I believe, the New World Order mod, which adds a bunch of, um, of government laws and stuff. So, you have established religion, welfare state, robber barons, and labor camps. You have uh, voting suffrage, or voting franchise. So, you can have suffrage and non no suffrage, no voting even, uh, which impacts war support and stuff, and impacts a drift towards so certain ideologies. The monetary policy. Otherwise, most of it is the same. You have a dedicated artillery designers, weapon designers, or small arms, vehicle, like motorized stuff, tank designers, aircraft, and ship designers. Uh, though, the tech that they design has not necessarily been changed. You still have light tanks, you still have medium tanks, heavy tanks, and all that. Aircraft, is the same, uh, culminating in jet, fighters, and bombers. Electronics and industry is the same as well. But the uh, like the main appeal of this mod, I believe, is just the sheer absurdity of the timeline and the uh, the setting with the Kingdom of Louisiana, King Louis, of course, of the House of Bourbon, Christian Republic of Deseret, Mormons, under the missionary movement. Let's have a look at the ideologies for uh, for a little bit, and that'll probably be the final thing we do in the video, because 
other than that, other than the, you know, interesting stuff um, in terms of the world, uh, this mod isn't very fully featured. As you can see, the focus trees, while being custom, are all very generic. All focus trees have uh, paths that lead you down a certain ideology. They have a League of Nations system, which is quite uh, interesting, where uh, the French, who lead the League of Nations, start votes on certain uh, accords, and each nation then votes, and if it fails, uh, nothing happens. If it succeeds, certain restrictions are put on each uh, nation, and the French gain political power here, of course. So, for, for example, uh, pro prohibiting poison gas, I believe, will... Um, uh, actually, no, that one doesn't make much sense, because uh, I believe poison gas is not a mechanic in the game yet. But, uh, stuff like Prisoners of, of War and International Court of Justice, uh, impacts justify war time and stuff like that. Which is a really, really interesting mechanic. But otherwise, the focus trees, like this part of the focus tree, is the same for every nation, I believe. And this stuff is the only stuff that's changed, and this stuff is only changed ever so slightly from nation to nation. You can see here on the Great, uh, unit, or sorry, Kingdom of Great Britain, you can see abolish the monarchy instead of abolish the uh, emperor, but this stuff is pretty much all the same. Now that is a bit unfortunate, but um, I believe the mod is a lot more limited in scope than something like, for example, uh, Kaiserreich, or Führerreich. Yeah, so the ideologies, finally. Uh, there are four ideologies, which are very, very rough groupings of each ideology. It's kind of uh, ideology, sorry, uh, or ideolog ideological group, or like quote-unquote vanguard, like the sort of um, each ideolog ideological um, grouping is um, basically lumped together and... Um, yeah, you can you can tell basically what each one is here. So you've got the socialist, or sorry, the radical ideology, which is socialists, democratic socialists, uh, social democrats, uh, Marxist Leninists, uh, everything like that. Of course, these guys are radicals under the Communist Party, while here the radicals are the Jacobin Socialist Party. Same here. Actually, no, here they yeah they are here as well. Christ uh, Chartist Labour Party. Sorry. Jacobin Socialist, Socialist Revolutionaries, etc. Then you have the Party of Order, Monarchist Party, or Monarchist Ideology. You've got the Action Francaise, which is uh, ultra-nationalist, kind of like fascist in this uh, mod, I believe. And then you've got uh, the Party of Movement, which is the democratic one. So, Monarchists are named for the first emperor of the, of the French Napoleon, or French Napoleon Bonaparte, the Bonapartists believe the monarchy is the personification of the nation and only his strict authority will ensure stability in the face of uh, the tumult of radicalism. Now, the Magar movement here. Taking the theory of natural selection to what they see as its logical conclusion, the social Darwinists declare that they are, their race, mobilized into the nation-state and guided by a powerful leader, will ultimately dominate the lesser races or perish in the attempt. So that is... Oh, not just fascist, that is actually very similar to National Socialism. A.K.A. the Nazi uh, ideology. And here, the communist, uh, German Com Communist Party, a left-wing nationalist movement with its origins in the Republican revolutions of the 1860s. The Marxists demand cultural or linguistic union in a republic with universal adult suffrage and a socialist economy. They believe that once all the peoples of the world have their own democratic nation-states, the repress repressive nature of the state will disappear. So that sounds almost like... Um, actually, yeah, that, that is, I guess, sort of Marxist. Um, they are all the same, right? Yeah, they are. So that's all the ideologies, four of them. Much less than uh, in something like uh, Kaiserreich, and the focus trees are, in my opinion, a bit lacking, but the world itself is so gosh darn interesting. The events as well are pretty much, um, like, they're, they're very full of lore and very interesting as well, uh, when you unpause and see them. Though we won't have time for that, because this video is only meant to be very short. The mod starts off with the civil war already going on in Germany. Got the Commonwealth reforms in Britain. There's a lot of like lore that you get, sort of like the base game and Kaiserreich itself. 
Mayday, whom uh, we remain vigilant in terms, or in case of uh, socialist radical pressures, because it is the day of the worker. Either way, this is après moi le deluge. Very interesting mod. Uh, very cool, and uh, probably not something I will feature on the channel yet, at least, unless uh, it gets a bit more fully featured. Um, simply because I have way more Kaiserreich than I need right now. Like, I have so many nations left to play in Kaiserreich. Maybe if I run out of uh, out of stuff there, I'll, uh, I'll feature this a bit more. Either way, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested, you can find my Discord in the description down below, Community Discord. You can find my Twitter as well, where I shitpost all, a lot. Uh, you can find my Patreon down below as well, uh, where you can support me if you'd like. You can find a link to the mod itself if you'd like to download it. And finally, you can find a link to my Twitch, where I, every now and then, livestream. Not only Hotline 4, but other games as well. That's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.